Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our talk on developing language learning tools uh, for Nobeen. My name is Bertie Baron and I'm a fifth year PhD student at Georgetown University. And uh, with me, my co-author um, and colleague Nubantu Khalil um, from the Nubian Language Society. Hi, aloha, maskar jilo, greetings to everyone. I am really privileged to be here uh, presenting uh, with my colleague uh, Berti from Georgetown University and in this very uh, significant conference related to indigenous languages. And uh, I'm going to speak about a language from Sudan and Egypt uh, called Nubi. It's one of the Nubian languages located in Lower Nubia. As you see here in the picture, uh, where Lower Nubia and Upper Nubia, Nubia is a region in between Sudan and Egypt. It was attributed, attributed to ancient culture and ancient civilization back in the old time of Nubia. Next slide, please. Uh, Nubian is a Nile, uh, is a Nile Nubian language belongs to a Nilo-Saharan, and Nilo-Saharan is a big family of language, big phylum, and it is very associated, very linked akin to Old Nubian. And Old Nubian is a language used in the, uh, the, in the Christian uh, medieval time in Nubia. Uh, we had three Christians, and Nubian is specifically is, uh, related to Novatia, the Northern Kingdom, and which, uh, uh, located between the first and the second cataract. Uh, and uh, Old Nubian was uh, a language used formally in the region Nubia during that time. And maybe Old Nubian is one of the rare languages that we can trace uh, its grammar 1,000 years back, according to Professor Gerald Brown in his book, who worked in this uh, archaic source and one of the ancient African languages that was written uh, during that time. Uh, next slide. The Old Nubian uh, script uh, used uh, Greek alphabet mainly and Coptic, and also they have three uh, local uh, alphabets, uh, local uh, characters uh, related to Meroitic script. So mainly the scripture uh, was used for biblical and official source and to reflect the uh, Christian face as you see here in the picture. Next slide. Uh, this is the outline of the paper that we are gonna cover. Uh, speaking about Nobin specifically, uh, as I mentioned, Nobin is a Nile uh, Nubian language and now uh, it locates in the country on um, Sudan and Egypt. Uh, well, before in Nubia, there was a multilingual and a diversity of Nubian languages and other African languages. But after uh, the Arabization of the region, uh, most of the African languages were suffering from endangerment, uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, you know, uh, the loss and because most of the speakers, they were forced to speak uh, Arabic and other uh, uh, languages, which is uh, considered new to Nubi. And there was an Arabization policy. And, uh, and specifically, the Nubi speaker, they have uh, went under a very uh, difficult time crisis called the crisis of the forcible immigration due to the uh, inundation, uh, to you, the inundation of the land because of the uh, construction of the Aswan Dam in the 50s. They were dislocated away from the Nile, from Nubia, in both uh, countries, Sudan and Egypt. And because of that, uh, the language was uh, affected and we have lost many uh, link and generation of speakers the Nubian uh, communities, uh, uh, they are 
everywhere now in Sudan and Egypt and Europe and in North America. And here we are as part of the Nubian community in North America. We're trying to help uh, the revitalization work of the Nubian language, uh, languages in general, in Nubian specifically. And we are trying to reach out with the people of Nubian, and encourage them to teach their young children, young generation, the language for everyone. Uh, next slide. Uh, in our Nubian Language Society, it's a local uh, organization which was uh, established in 2015 back in Nubia. And, uh, and through me and others, we have transferred this work from back home to the United States. And we're working definitely uh, in different languages, Nubian languages, uh, but we are uh, in, uh, we, uh, we are targeting Nubian and other languages. Uh, what part of what we do for Nubian is preservation, documentation, teaching the children, and also doing some literacy program. And uh, also we do a dictionary uh, project, but uh, we also, we are very optimistic to start the Nubian language acquisition program for non-native speaker. And we worked with Georgetown University in 2018 uh, with Dr. Hanna, uh, professor in the Department of Linguistics. And we, try, uh, we attempt to help her using Nobin as in the field method uh, linguistics. And uh, I think my colleague, uh, Dr. Berti, was the teaching assistant. And uh, also in this summer, we had some events in uh, Georgetown University and in DC in general. Next slide. This is a sample of the work we do for the children. Uh, and you see here, the all moving alphabet have been reduced to only 24 to match the change in the Nubian phonology, but also make it more modernized and attractive for the children. Next slide. And this is part of the Nubian community learning their language uh, either in, uh, in uh, back home in Nubia or in the United States here, you see the children are very interactive with the classes. So as Ubuntu was saying, um, in the spring of 2018, uh, Nobin was the language of study for field methods in linguistics class in the linguistics department. And I was serving as the teaching assistant for that class. Um, so since then, several satellite projects uh, stemmed out of this class, including the project we'll be talking about today. Um, which is uh, developing uh, digital language learning tools for Nobin. So the goals of this project were the following. We wanted to complement existing Nobin language courses and teaching resources. Um, and by doing so, we wanted to address the needs of learners from various backgrounds, from beginner to advanced and from heritage speaker to foreign language learner. Um, we wanted this tool to be widely available um, and hopefully available worldwide. Um, and for that, we wanted the tool to be easy of access, um, both technically and also um, financially. Um, and we wanted it to be easy to update and maintain. So this is the type of resources that were existing before um, we started working on developing digital tools. And the idea was to essentially reformat or um, recycle these existing tools used um, locally for a, an online platform that would be used more widely. Um, so to do so, we're using the Memrise platform. So Memrise is an online tool um, developed for language learning. Um, and it allows users to um, navigate um, multimedia content and um, it allows developers of courses to uh, combine um, different types of media and give a more um, hands-on learning experience. 
So uh, because Memrise is partly crowdsourced, um, it's actually fairly easy to create um, a course on Memrise. And this is what we went on to doing. And we populated it with um, content that we developed, collected, and so on. Uh, Memrise is also available both online and via smartphone sorry, smartphone application, making it um, easy of access. It is free of use and um, it's used mainly uh, to focus on vocabulary because of its uh, flashcard style. If you're familiar with uh, tools like Duolingo or Memrise itself, um, this is what um, most, most courses look like on Memrise. Um, the great thing also is that it has a testing function uh, with multiple choice items, as well as writing items, um, making it really hands-on and um, interactive. So um, our goal is to develop courses for different levels. At this time, uh, we've been working mostly on a beginner level course, um, materials, for the intermediate and more advanced level courses are uh, currently being developed, but haven't been um, um, fed into the app yet. Um, within our beginner level course, we have topic specific lessons. I believe we have 24 different lessons at this time, uh, progressing from basic vocabulary to more advanced. Um, the vocabulary in each lesson is being introduced uh, with the word in the Nubian script, an audio recording, and also an identifiable image. And whenever um, necessary or whenever an identifiable image is not available, it was replaced with an English translation, which serves um, right now more like a placeholder than uh, anything, as we want to um, step away from English as much as possible. And we want to make sure learners don't have to rely on English to learn Nobin. Uh, besides the vocabulary learning uh, part of the tool, um, the learning assessment part is either picture based or reading based or listening based. And it's a combination of multiple choice items as well as uh, written production items. So this is the link to the current beta version for our course, which um, we invite you to um, look up uh, if you'd like. Um, and essentially, this is what the course looks like. So when you get to the Memrise website, this is the page you get to when um, opening the No Bean for Beginners course. So um, it displays a leaderboard along with the 24 different lessons. Um, it's not the case that you have to go through the lessons in order, but um, the numbering of the different lessons uh, suggests that this is the, bet, the way to go. Uh, within each lesson, uh, you can first see a vocabulary list with each vocabulary item in the Nubian script, along with, well, here, these are uh, numbers. Um, and in other cases, we have um, images like here. Um, when starting the learning process, so when clicking on learning these words, um, this is the type of frame that you see with each word provided with one or multiple audio recordings and an illustration. Um, and this is essentially the learning phase. Once a few words have been learned, the learner can uh, test whether they um, learn those words or not. So this is the type of um, multiple choice item that shows at the beginning of the learning process with only two um, separate options uh, to pick from, which are both illustrations and um, one of them matches the word provided in the bean. Another type of item is the writing production item where um, the illustration is provided and the learner is expected to uh, type in the no bean word. 
And for that, the characters from the Nubian, the Nubian scripts that are required are provided in a box under um, the box where the answer is typed. In the event that the learner doesn't remember the word, um, the next page shows the word itself being written in Nubian, uh, in the Nubian script, along with um, an audio recording of that word. And now the learner is expected to copy the Nubian word um, that depicts the, um, what is in the illustration. Um, for the multiple choice items, um, I believe that um, Memrise allows for um, two to six different um, options to choose from. Here it is four. And um, essentially when, um, yeah, this is four and this one has six different options. So as the learner learns more words, um, there are more and more options making the learning um, a little more challenging every time. And so what you noticed here is that um, in the testing phase, only the picture and the words in the Nubian script are provided. But once the learner has provided the correct answer, the English translation appears confirming um, what the meaning depicted is. Um, and this is another one of those um, multiple choice items, but this time we're going again from the Nubian script, the word in the Nubian script to um, the picture. Um, and I will not go over this too much, but essentially the same um, options are available from the phone app. So that phone is downloadable for free on uh, any smartphone that supports it, making it um, a tool that can be uh, very widely used, uh, even in cases where um, computers are not available. Um, and this is one of the great advantages of um, using Memrise as a uh, tool to develop language learning materials. Um, and in addition to that, the other advantages are um, the ones listed on this slide. And to cite only a few, um, what really was crucial to us was that it supports the Nubian script. It is affordable. Um, it is also um, fairly man manageable uh, for maintenance purposes. And it allows for things such as uh, gradual learning with lessons and courses um, that can be designed on a scalable level. Um, also, and very importantly, the use of this tool is approved by the community of learners as suitable for their needs. Um, on the other hand, we found a few issues and limitations among which um, Essentially, um, even though the Nubian script is supported, um, we're facing a few issues with diacritics that we're trying to find a workaround for. Um, and if anyone working with similar tools has any suggestions, we'd be happy to talk about that with you some more during the Q&A. Uh, this is our work in progress. We're still working on integrating visual elements um, and having multiple voices for each um, audio element. Uh, we want to represent um, female speakers as much as male speakers um, and having each voice for having two voices for each lexical item um, is essentially our goal. Um, just a few concluding remarks. Um, I want to point out that this project is an example of use of pre-existing digital tools uh, with the aim of contributing to the revitalization effort of a language, in this case, no bean. Um, this project is also one of many successful online-based ling uh, language learning projects addressing the needs of heritage speakers as well as foreign language learners of endangered languages. And I should say that the idea of this project was truly inspired by um, Kevin Wong's work on Christong and um, the learning tools that um, he and his team developed um, and the speakers of Christong developed for Christong. 
Um, and we're really hoping that similar projects will also contribute to bringing together communities of language learners. Thank you very much.